Hello and welcome to this short tutorial about the importance of nesting with Premiere Pro. When you create a project, your project will have a beginning, a middle and an end. And it's important when you edit your project to think about it in those terms and create sequences for each individual section of your project. The reasons why will become very clear to you as you do it. You're breaking your project up into very manageable chunks. And also, if you've got a part of the project that you need to cut out later on, rather than having to scroll through a massive long timeline to try and get to where it is, you can choose one of the chunks that you've edited in a separate sequence and get rid of it. It's a much easier choice and a much easier selection. Now, this particular project had five sections. It had an intro, and then it had the knife sequence, and then it had the hoodie sequence. Um, oh, and earlier on it had part one, uh, when they were waiting in the shop and then it had the exit. Now when it actually came to the final project we'd included part one but it was too long so we needed to get rid of part one and we didn't use it in the end. So because I'd broken it up into individual sections I could just get rid of part one, I'd edited it separately and I could leave it out. Just exit off from my timeline. Now firstly this is in the wrong order. Wouldn't it be nice if it was in the right order? Simple to do. Click and grab hold of and just drag it to the end. So the exit would be at the end, and then knife and hoodie, and then my project is now in the right order from a tab. And it's simply a case of grabbing hold of the tab and dragging it to wherever you want it to be on this particular timeline here. Now, I have broken my project up into four distinct sections. My introduction, my crisis, if you like, the resolution of the crisis, and the final goodbyes. And that's how you tell stories. You introduce the story, you introduce the characters, you then introduce the conflict, the problem, the difficulty, you then have the resolution of the difficulty, and then you have your final goodbyes. That's good storytelling. And if you can break your project up into manageable sequences such as this, then you will find your editing process is much easier to do, you've got manageable chunks, and it makes the whole thing far quicker because for the majority of the time you're dealing with small sections as opposed to dealing with this massive long timeline where every little change you make affects everything down the road. So break your project up into manageable chunks, which you can then nest in another sequence. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to create a new sequence. So I could go File, New, Sequence, but my preference is to use the New Items icon down here. Click New Item, Sequence. Now, the first thing it's going to give me is exactly the same sequence settings as I've already been using, which is exactly what I want. I'm working HDV, so I can click on that, and I'm going to call this my master, and click OK, and I've created a new empty sequence. And I'm going to take the sequence icon, and I'm going to drag it and drop it into my sequence bin, and I'm going to open my sequence bin, and then I'm going to start dragging these sequences into this master timeline this master sequence in the order that they're going to show in the final product. So I've got my intro, and then I have my knife sequence, and then I have my hoodie sequence, and then I have my exit sequence. Now, as you can see, when I'm dropping these in the timeline, I'm getting this snapping action. Can you see this snap? And we've got this black line. This is because I have this icon here enabled, the snap icon. If you disable that and you try and do snapping, it won't work and you won't really know where to go. So if you're not getting the snap showing, click here, make sure it's enabled, and then when you click and drag, you'll get that lovely black line that tells you that you are in exactly the right place. And now I have my sequence made. But you might turn around and say, but hang on a second, you've got a sequence in a sequence. Aren't you gonna get degradation of quality? The answer is no, you're not, and this is why. When Premiere Pro brings any item into the project panel, as we have them all here, these items are not brought in as footage items into the project. They are simply references to where this particular footage is kept on the hard drive. It hasn't physically brought it in. It will always be playing the reference back to the original on the hard drive. So therefore, when I drop the final version into a sequence, it's not playing a copy, it's actually still playing the original where it is kept on my hard drive. So if I then nest a sequence inside another sequence, it is still going back and looking at this reference and playing the original footage item. So it doesn't matter how many times I nest a sequence within a sequence within a sequence within a sequence, it doesn't matter how many times you do it, 
Premiere Pro will always reference and play the original footage item, so you will not get any degradation of quality whatsoever when you play through your project. Okay, so now I have these four items in here. I want you to note first off that each one of them are now a single footage item. So if we look at the hoodie one here, let's drag on hoodie, you can see it is a single footage item so I could apply a single effect, say the fast colour corrector and change it. But if I went back to the original where it says hoodie, notice there are lots of bits and pieces in the hoodie and I would have to apply an individual effect to each one of these individual slices to be able to affect the whole thing equally and in a balanced way. Whereas in my master sequence, because I've dragged the item in, it is a single footage item and I can apply a single effect to the individual sequence. Saves a lot of time that. The thing that I might want to do is I might want to zoom in to where my individual sequences meet and I might want to apply a transition. So if I go to my video transitions and I can open up my dissolves, I've got the default one here, cross dissolve, drag it and drop it onto the item. It's only going to let me go for a single sided one. And then if I just play that, you'll see what I'm looking like. It gives me a cross dissolve. And a cross dissolve like that, just so you know, says time has passed. Time has passed. We're in a different place, we're in a different time. That's actually the message of a cross dissolve like that. And I would go through my sequence and between each one of these sequences that have been added in, I would add in a cross dissolve or some kind of transition to help with my storytelling. So I've now created this new sequence which has got my four original sequences inside of it. However, what if I want to apply an effect to all of these? Well, this is how I do my own workflow. I am going to create a further sequence. So I go to my new items icon, click on it, new sequence, and I'm going to call this my output sequence. Once again, it's given me my default correct sequence settings. I call this my output sequence and I click OK. Then, now it's gone into the wrong bin, so I'm just going to drag that and drop it into my sequences bin. And I'm going to open up my sequences bin, and I'm going to take my master sequence, and I'm going to drag it, I'm going to drop it into my output sequence, and I know that I'm not going to get any degradation in quality because it's still referencing the original piece of footage each time on my hard drive. And then I can apply one master color correction item to this final project that will affect everything. And how do I do that? Simple. Let's go to our effects tab and type fast. And then we've got the fast color corrector. Click and drag the fast color corrector as a single footage item. So this is going to affect everything. And I can scroll it open. And I can go down to my gamma slider. And let's say we want it to look a bit darker and a bit more moody. Simply drag it down. And I have affected the whole item with one simple movement. Now it's quite common for people to want to do colour effects to make something look a lot more red or a lot more blue depending on the mood of the piece that they are producing. What you want to do rather than trying to add it into each individual bit of a particular sequence is to put it all into a master sequence and then a final output sequence and affect the whole thing with a single colour wash at the end. And that way you can affect the whole way your project feels. If you have got individual items that need to have individual colour correction problems addressed, you can do that as and when you come across them, but for a final output to give it a mood, a colour feel, you just do it on one footage item by having a final output sequence. Now this is my output sequence, and that's the one that I would then output to my media encoder, or however I'm going to do it, straight out for my customer to see. So that's how you can use nesting. Do use nesting. Think about breaking up your projects into manageable chunks because as you can see on this particular project there was a chunk that we never ended up using because we needed to reduce the time so we cut that particular chunk out but because we thought about the project in terms of manageable chunks that particular bit could just be dropped out because it was edited separately as opposed to being part of a huge long timeline where I had to go in and select this little bit and all the way to this bit and delete it and all the bits and pieces in between. That's how you can make your editing much smarter by using sequences and learning how to nest your sequences for best effect. Well, my name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching. Make sure you use nesting and don't fear you won't lose any quality.